there! Welcome to the second half of the 123 quilt along. I'm so super excited that we are going to start quilting our quilts. So you've been making all those beautiful quilt tops. They pop up on Facebook and Instagram and on the Bernina blog in all types of fabrics and colors and with tiny birdies on them. I love them. If you want to check it out, um, don't go to the hashtag 123QuiltAlong on uh, Instagram. It's wonderful to see all those different quilt tops. And now is the time to turn those quilt tops into real quilts. But before we dive into this video, I would love to hear where you are quilting from. So feel free to go to the comment section down below and leave a comment telling me where you are watching this video. I think we have quilters from all over the world. So let's start. I'm first going to tell you what we are going to tackle in this video. So we are going to start with the setup. I will talk a little bit about thread, the needle and um, getting ready to quilt. Then we are going to outline the first uh, four, well, five trees. So tree one, two, three, four, A and four B. We are going to out outline those and we're going to fill in tree one and two. So all the information about the number of the trees and what we're doing is also on the Bernina blog. So um, before you start quilting, also make sure to read that one. I will put it in the description down below. So to start with our setup, um, let's go over a, a few things that you will need today. So you will need a sewing machine and you will need a foot on your sewing machine. So if you're going to do only straight stitching, um, then you will need a walking foot or a normal um, sewing foot. If you want to do ruler work, you will need, let me get it from my machine, you will need a ruler foot. So here we have the ruler foot and 72S, uh, this is the Bernina ruler foot. Um, so yeah, you need a ruler foot and that is, you can recognize a ruler foot by the high, well, the, the edge over here. So it's round and the needle goes exactly in the center of the foot and it has a high edge so that the ruler can easily slide around it. Uh, and then I'm also going to use a open toe foot and this one I'm putting my hand behind it, otherwise it will focus on my my face. Let me see. Can you focus on the foot? There we go. So this is a open toe foot and I'm going to use this for um, free motion quilting. So uh, it doesn't need to look like this, the foot that you're using for free motion quilting. You can also have uh, like a more rectangular foot, a squared foot. Uh, but it has to have a open space so you can kind of see where you're going with your quilting. So, um, free motion quilting foot and a ruler foot um, on your machine. And then you will need thread and needles. On the Vernina blog post two weeks ago, I wrote a post about different threads and different needles that you can use for quilting. So if you want some more in-depth information on the topic, um, check out the link in the description below this video and there I will point you to the blog post um, about the thread and the needles. So I'm just going to cover what thread I am using right now. And I am going to work with a silky 30 weight um, a 30 weight is a little bit a thicker thread, so um, 50 weight, the higher the number, the thinner the thread. So 50 weight is what I would use for piecing together my quilt and um, 30 weight is a little bit thicker and then you also have 12 weight for example for hand quilting and that's even thicker than that. So, But today I'm using 30 weight and I'm using a nice variegated what is it called, multicolor uh, thread, because I am going to work on a pink quilt. Um, and I'm going for a little bit of bolder um, thread compared to my quilt, because then you can see my stitches nicely in the video. Um, yeah, so with this thread on the spools uh, of Soki, it states what kind of needle you need, so that's really handy. So this says use a 90, uh, or 100 top stitch needle. So I have put in a 90 needle, top stitch needle, and I'm just going to see how it works. Um, 
it's always kind of experimenting so if you're using a new thread um, see what works and if uh, you have a lot of thread breaking then uh, maybe you can try a different needle but this is a setup that I'm going to start with and I have a 50 weight in light pink in my bobbin so that will match the backing of my quilt so next to this you can also use uh, quilting gloves these have a little bit more grip than just your fingers on the fabric so then you uh, yeah uh, can quilt a little bit more relaxed because you have more grip with the uh, quilting gloves and I have a test piece at hand so a test piece is just a small fabric piece that I turn into a sandwich and on this I can do some test stitches uh, I do that every time before I start quilting or when I um, switch out a needle or when I put in a different thread then uh, I always do some test stitches and then um, I know I'm good to go also to test out my tension and things like that and also when I want to make a new kind of um, pattern with a ruler for example here I was trying out some some circles and then it's just nice to have a test piece at hand so that you can do uh, a little bit of stitching on that before you go to your real quilt um let's see did i cover everything i think so so that means that it's time to start quilting so let's go ahead and thread your machine and get your test piece out let's make a few stitches so i am going to bring up my bobbin thread and um, then I'm going to stitch uh, on the same spot a few times. So this will secure my thread and uh, keep it in place. And I'll do it like this because now I don't have to make a knot and bury my thread in my quilt sandwich afterwards when I quilt a little bit away from this point. Then I can just snip off these threads and um, it will stay in place but there are multiple ways to do this so another way if you want to stop um, what I could do is then stitch a few times at the same spot again and bring up my needle and whoops clip off my thread so now it's all uh, all in place um, but if I don't want to do that stitching on the spot you can also make um, a knot after you're done quilting. So let's see, let's bring up my thread. And now I'm not going to stitch at the same spot, but I'm just going to start quilting. And now I'm going to stop. Going to clip off my top thread going to pull this so now I haven't stitched at the same spot but I pulled uh, my top thread and then my bobbin thread will pop up so I'm just going to pull that a little bit and snap it off so there we go now on this side uh, over here I have two threads and on this side as well I have two threads and they are not secure yet so I can't um, clip them because then the thread will unravel. So now we have to make sure that this stays in place. Let me show you how I do that. I need to keep this in place. So I'm going to take a needle and thread both. Well, first make a little knot. And that knot needs to be kind of close to your fabric. So here it goes, a little knot. And then I'm going to thread both threads to my needle. There we go. And now I'm going to go in around the spot where my stitching started. And then I'm going to move in between the layers. So I'm not uh, at the bottom of my quilt, but I'm inside my quilt sandwich. Then I'm going to pull it and you're just going to tuck it until that knot slips into your quilt. And then here 
I'm clipping it off. Let me show that again for the other side. So make a little, oops, a little knot. Kind of close to your quilt sandwich. And then thread your needle. And then bring it inwards and wiggle it inside your batting, so inside the quilt sandwich. And then you're pulling it until the knot pops in to the sandwich. There it is, and then you clip it off. So that just takes a little bit longer, but it does leave you with a um, yeah, a nicer finish. So here I kind of overdid it, so I stitched a lot at the same spot. But you can see that here you can't see a thing of where you started and where you stopped. And also here, uh, it will just give you a little bit of extra stitches on the same spot. Um, but especially when you're using uh, thread in the color of your background, it won't really show. So those are your options for starting and stopping and what to do with your thread. So let me show you what we will be doing today. So I said we were going to start with outlining our trees and for that I am going to use my ruler foot and a straight ruler. Um, if you want you could also do this with a walking foot or do it on just with your regular sewing foot uh, because it's just stitching straight lines. But um, I like to do it with my um, my ruler and ruler foot, but we're just going to make straight lines. So here we go. Um, yeah, so let me tell you what I'm doing. If you're new to this, um, just take your time on your practice piece to make some straight lines. And what you do is you keep um, your ruler in place. And as you can see, I have a few fingers on top of my ruler. I have a finger on the other side of my ruler foot. So the foot is giving pressure to the ruler because you're um, sliding it alongside it. So then I like to have a finger on the other side. I'm not pushing it too hard that way, but just having it so it won't slip um, in the opposite direction. And then you can reposition your hands as often as you feel necessary. So you have the most control when your hands are around your foot. So if my hands are here, I have less control over the fabric movement. But if my hands are here, I have the most control. So if you move like this, always make sure that your needle stops in a needle down position so then it won't go anywhere. Then you can reposition your hands and continue. So, um, yeah, so when you make a few lines, uh, you can check uh, if you like your stitches. But if you're working on a normal sewing machine, then you have to regulate your stitches yourself. And don't get scared or discouraged um, because your stitches won't look very even when you're just starting out. You really have to get the hang of that. And you can only get the hang of it when you practice a lot. And Maybe you can see the one to three quilt along as your practice quilt. So you can, after you're done, you can track your trees. So three, one, two, three, four, uh, until three, sixteen. You can see your progress. And I'm sure that when you get to three, to three, sixteen, your stitches will look more even than uh, your stitches on three, one. And it's something that you just have to learn. So um, please don't get discouraged when you're not happy, completely happy with your stitches. You will get there if you practice a lot. And also don't get discouraged if you see my stitches on the Q16. I will also be working on my uh, Brunina 770, but um, the stitches that I have here are perfect because the machine does it for me. But if you're doing it on a regular sewing machine, you just have to practice and I'm sure you can do it. So uh, let's start practicing. So on the outlining of the trees, we are going to use a straight ruler or a straight line stitching. 
and then uh, with tree one we are going to do some free motion quilting and we're going to make simple kind of straight ish lines oops my thread broke let's see ah i see my thread got stuck over here okay let me fix that what we're going to do as free motion quilting um is making straight ish lines and um we're going to go from top to bottom or from left to right would you prefer um, and that is just to practice uh, your stitching. So just getting a feel of what it likes, what it feels like to work um, free motion on your machine. And if you're going to do free motion or ruler work, you want to lower the feed dogs on your machine. So the feed dogs are, um, well, <laughs> the Q16 doesn't have feed dogs, but the feed dogs are the little thingy that pull your fabric uh, along. So you don't want those involved when you're doing free motion quilting or ruler work because then you want to be able to move in all directions. So lower your feed dogs if you want to do free motion quilting. And we're going to do something like this uh, on tree one. And that is just to give you an idea of um, the quilting motion and uh, moving your fabric and making stitches and don't think too much about a complicated pattern so this is the thing and you can make it as wavy or wobbly if you want to you can do a more straightish line kind of organic straight is what we're going for so that's for tree one and tree two we're going to make a nice um what is it called and that just called that out but a kind of uh, cross, uh, <laughs> it's not a cross, it's going to be bigger. So it's going to be like lines like this and then making lines like that. I'm just going to put the English word in the screen. So we're going to make this shape in tree two. Um, yeah, but let's first start with outlining our trees. This quilt I have already outlined the three to trees and you don't really see it because I use a 50 weight thread and I stitched in the ditch and stitching in the ditch means what I tried here that you just stitch in the seam and some days that works perfectly and sometimes it's a little wobbly but as you can see when you look from a little distance you won't, won't really notice um, if it goes a little bit off the seam or off the ditch. So this is with a 50 weight thread in the color of my background and then you can see it nicely blends with the quilt. And I wanted to show you this because you have the option of stitching in the ditch like I tried here or um, you can uh, take a little offset. So here I stitched just a little around the shape of the tree. And it's just what you prefer. So um, if you don't like the look of that, your thread is just off and not always catching the ditch, then you can also stitch just beside it on purpose. Um, yeah, so those are kind of options that you have. You can go ahead and stitch next to the ditch or stitch in the ditch. So I am working on my Q16 and this table has, this sewing machine has a super big workspace. Um, but when you're using a, a regular sewing machine or have a smaller workspace, then the same things um, apply to keep in mind when you're setting up your quilt. So I am now placing my quilt um, on my table and I think I'm going to start uh, quilting this quilt, the, this tree. But what you see me doing is I'm pulling my um, fabric in. So I'm not spreading it out completely so that it is hanging over the, the edge of the table. But I'm pulling it in and I'm crumpling it up a little bit so that I have my tree over here to work on. But that most of the quilt um, that I'm not working on is also not pulling. So that's the main thing that you want. 
Um, also, when you have a large portion of the quilt on your lap, you could place a pillow in your lap so that the uh, quilt is not tugging at the edge of the table because that will make it harder to move your uh, quilt around. So that is something um, in your setup to keep in mind. You want to quilt on a small area of your quilt and the rest should be kind of taking up a as small uh, surface as possible. So um, yeah, piling it up, that's all fine um, so that it slides easily. So that is also, if you're working on a different machine, it's something to keep in mind to um, yeah, um, take note of where your quilt is and uh, make sure that it's not pulling or tugging um, at the edge of your table. So now I am going to put on my gloves. Here I have my ruler and I'm putting on some quilting gloves to have more grip on my quilt. And then I think we're really ready to start quilting. So the plan for this tree is to stitch an outline around the tree and also I'm going to stitch around the tree trunk. And I think normally I would, when it wasn't for demonstration purposes, I would quilt this in the color of my background fabric. Um, but now I am stitching in a little bit more bolder color uh, so that you can see better what I'm doing. And I'm going to start um, here, so at the side of the tree trunk, because then I'm moving around the trunk, I'm moving all around the tree, and then I'm going to move around the top of the trunk. So there are a few um, other options, of course, you could um, go first around the tree trunk and then all around your tree, um, just what works for you. Um, but this pathway then um, you know that you stitch everything in one go. And then after I have done one tree, I'm going to do um, cut my thread and then do this next do the next tree. And I'm not going to stitch in the ditch really because I have such a bold color as you can see here my thread. Can you see it? Let me zoom in a little. Yeah, you can see it. So my thread really stands out um, and when I do that stitching in the ditch and I'm missing the ditch a few times then that will show more. So I think I'm just going to go, I don't know, a little bit, not a quarter of an inch, but just a little bit besides the tree trunk. Um, yeah, there we go. So my curl is in place. Let's see if we can stitch this. Great, so we have a first line quilted. And the good thing about a ruler foot is, by the way, that you can maneuver your ruler on all sides. And because we have lowered our feed dogs, um, you can move your quilt in each direction. So I can now move it just aside, so I don't have to turn my quilt. So if you're doing this outlining on um, just a walking foot or a normal sewing foot, um, that's perfectly possible and then you just have to uh, turn your work um, while you're working. Uh, turn your quilt while, while you're stitching. A little bit more and then we come to a corner. I'm just going to turn my ruler a little bit and stitch around that corner. Oops, I went a little bit too far. No problem, just stitching back. So, as you can see, this didn't go to plan. But that just happens. And uh, when your quilt is finished, so now it really shows. So I uh, went stitching in the ditch instead of next to it. And over there, I went a little bit too far and then I went back. Um, and now it really shows because you're so zoomed in, <laughs> literally, uh, with my camera zoomed in. But um, when you move on and see your quilt when it's done, it won't show as much. So 
it's I think it's better to just continue so I would really not um, uh, rip this out I would just continue uh, quilting and uh, I'm not bothered bothered by it too much when you're doing this in the color of your background fabric then it will show way less so now we're, oh, of course I'm stitching in a darker pink and everything I do really shows so So I've turned my work so I can put my finger on this side and that will keep my ruler in place way better so it won't slip while I'm quilting. It's good practice when you're quilting to um, every once in a while check in and just feel if there's a lot of tension somewhere in your arms or in your uh, shoulders or your neck and then try to relax into the quilting a little bit and see if maybe your quilt is slipping from your table and that's why you really have to um, keep hold of your quilt or maybe it's stuck somewhere and, and, and it, it's just harder to maneuver it and that can also cause some tension in your body because you're more um, uh, you're gripping everything tighter so just try to feel every now and then how you're doing and if you need to relax a little bit there we go that is one tree done that is the outline of one tree and uh, we are going to outline um, all the trees in the center of the quilt first before we start quilting so let's move over to these two So when your thread breaks once, um, just re-thread your machine and continue like nothing happened because maybe it was a, a thicker piece in your quilt or a lot of seams or something uh, just randomly happened that break, broke your thread. But when it happens a, a couple times, like for me now, um, then maybe you want to um, check if everything is okay. Is your bobbin thread uh, threaded color correctly? Is your top thread really threaded um, nicely? Um, maybe you have to clean out your machine or oil it or um, what I now did is to switch to a hundred needle um, and I was working with a 90 needle because that was working with the um, cream colored thread um, that was the same width. But maybe this multicolored th thread didn't like the 90 needles. So 
um, yeah, it's sometimes you don't really know what uh, is wrong and why your thread is breaking and it can be very frust frustrating. But just try to see if there's something that you can change to experiment on um, making it better. <sighs> so there it is. It is pretty frustrating when your thread breaks, but just try to keep your calm and uh, continue on. <sighs> so there it is. It is pretty frustrating when your thread breaks, but just try to keep your calm and uh, continue on. And that is our final tree quilted. So I think with this final tree, my stitches started to look better. Well, the, the distance um, next to the tree started to look better. Until then, <laughs> I started talking and sewing and I missed, um, well, I started stitching in the ditch here again. Um, yeah, and as you can see, when your thread matches your fabric, um, it blends in really nicely. So this is pink thread and orange fabric, but still um, It blends in so much better than when you're using a really standing out color I'm not a perfect stitcher. So for me, you will see Everything that's not so perfect really well when I use this thread and if you're super super good at stitching and very precise then um, going with a bold color thread will really make your work stand out. So those were my four center tree blocks quilted, well outlined, and now we're going to move on to quilting tree one. And I am going to switch over to my free motion foot and to cream colored thread or, or off-white colored thread because then you will see my stitches a little better than when I stay using this pink one. Here we have tree one, and uh, to say to see where this tree is in the quilt, just check the um, blog post that goes along with this video. And what we're going to do with tree one is just make some lines. And you can choose if you want to go from left to right, right to left, or if you want to go from top to bottom, bottom to top. Um, I'm going to go. I am going for um, vertical lines. Um, yeah, so you can go ahead and put on a free motion foot or uh, when you're doing just straight stretch stitching, you can just go up and down with a normal foot. And I'm going to do the first half on my Q16 and then the second half on my 770 without stitch regulation so you can see what that looks like for me. Then when you get to the edge and you're working in the same thread color, then you can go ahead and sew all the way to your um, to your sewing line and then they call it travel stitch over that line. But since I am working with a uh, off-white thread here, I'm just going to move over in the ditch and then um, work my way up from here. When you get to your tree trunk, um, you can travel stitch along the tree trunk uh, upwards and uh, start from there or you can do as what I'm doing, just stitch, stitch along it, no right or wrong here. So I'm just going to stop my thread here and show you how I do this on my 770. So I have stitched a few stitches on my chest piece and now I'm just going to bring my thread up. And start quilting. So here I have um, 
smaller arm on my machine than the Q16. So I have my quilt over here and I just have to make sure that it's also um, on my lap. It's a little bit piled, stacked up so that it's not going to tuck at the edge of the table because here is already the edge of the table and there's quite some quilt over here. So just piling this up on my lap like so and then it won't tug as much on my quilt while I'm sewing. There we go. There we go, so I have a tree quilted. So let me show you the difference from what I did with my Q16. So here you see very regular stitches. And then here are some skipped stitches or stitches that are quite small and then get bigger again or, well, are not so even. And some, some places they are pretty even. So this is just something that you have to practice and when you zoom out again then you will only see the structure that it created. So you can take my quilting as an example and then figure out if you want to do a wider spacing between the lines or maybe narrower or that you want to have more wiggles or less wiggles. This is just an example. But these are just some easy lines that you can do to get the feeling of how your machine works and how you can make stitches on your machine on your quilt. So tree one is done. A good moment to take a little break, do some stretching and uh, take something to drink. Just take a few minutes uh, away from your sewing machine and then get ready to sew tree two. And for that, we're first going to do some marking on our tree. For the pattern that we're going to make in this tree, we're going to quilt only with a straight ruler um, and we're going to put some markings on here. So if you are working with the every angle ruler, then you see here a 60 degree line. And that is the line that we're going to use to make markings. So I am going to had, go ahead and place my 60 degree line on this seam in my tree and just mark a line and I'm marking this line with my Hira marker that is uh, this tool and it is perfect for marking your quilt because it only makes a kind of crease in here so it doesn't make uh, any coloration or something like that on your tree just a little mark and I'm also going to place my well the other 60 degree angle or the 60 degree line on um, the line that we've already marked and then mark your line in this direction so that's a good beginning good start for our lines um, and what we're going to do is uh, quilt lines uh, next to that. So first we, we are going to quilt the lines in one direction and then we're going to quilt the lines on the other side. And after that we're going to quilt lines like this in the other direction. But what you want is two lines like this so we can use these as a guide um, yeah, and then we can use our ruler to help us make straight lines so let's go back to the sewing machine make sure your ruler foot is on because we're doing ruler work again and you don't want to do this with any other foot than a ruler foot then I, you're going to find your marking and I'm going to 
attach my thread over here. Okay. Um, well, actually, it's nice to attach your thread on uh, a quarter inch away from your marking because then you can put your ruler. I will turn my work so you can see what I mean. So the thing with your ruler foot is that your needle is in the center. So it is a quarter inch away from the edge. So if you want to align your ruler on the marking we made, um, you will need to place your ruler foot on the edge of the marking. That means um, your needle is a quarter inch away from the line. And there we go. Oh, let me get my gloves. So there we go. Um, we're first going to quilt this line all the way to the other side. to travel to the side and we want to travel to the side so that we can have our ruler aligned on the line we just stitched so I'm checking every now and then just a little bit further there we go so now I can line up my ruler with the line that we just stitched and I'm going to position it like this and then move up again. So what this does is that it gives us two parallel lines and I'm using now my first line as a guide. Okay, I bump into my tree trunk, but I also see that I have to make a little line over here and over there. So I am just going to travel along the stitches that I had already made until I get to the point that I can continue my line. Then I will bump into my tree trunk again. Go. This is also what you will do when you run into a birdie. Then you will just uh, stitch around it until you can continue your line. These tra travel stitches, they show now because they're a different thread color than I used over here. Um, yeah, but if you use that in the same thread color, then it will be all fine. So now let's see, I want to make a new line over here, so I'm going to travel all the way to here and then start my new line. Let's see, almost there. There we go, and now I can also already measure on the bottom over here. When I line it up on my seam there, there's no room for another uh, stitch line here. So uh, that means we're done uh, in this direction. 
but now I'm going to go ahead and travel to this marking but you can still see even I moved around my quilt quite a lot um, yeah. so we're going to move over to this crease and then continue stitching Here we have our second tree quilted and this design has a lot of room for uh, modifications. So I use the 60 degree marking but you could also use the 45 degree marking. Then you would get a little bit of a different shape so you just have the... Actually, then you can make the squares on the side and these are a little bit more elongated. Um, I use the width of the ruler or the spacing but you could also use other markings so you can bring those lines in a lot more um, something else you can do is I just made single lines but you could also make double lines if you place your ruler um, on the line that you just quilted and then go back again um, on a ruler with a part no a uh, foot uh, with a part that will give you a quarter inch spacing between your lines and you can make double lines um, yeah, so a lot of room to play with and uh, this of course is also a design that you can do with a walking foot um, when you don't want to do the ruler work. So there we have it, our first tree. Did I just call that first tree? No, that's our second tree. This is our first tree with those organic -y, straight straightish lines. Um, just to practice your quilting with, to get your stitches right, um, to get just the settings of your machine okay, and uh, to just try it out. So play around with this. Also with these you can make two that go close together and then a little bit more width and then again two that go close together. Um, and you can make them in the other direction. Just play with it and uh, make it your own. So. That was tree one and tree two. So there you go, that was week one of our quilting adventure. We are going to work on our quilt every week from now on. So uh, the pace of the quilt along is going up a little bit. And that is mostly because you then practice a lot more frequently and probably get that muscle memory of moving your quilt around. Uh, sooner. So if you practice every week for the next eight week, eight weeks, then you have your quilt finished. So uh, every week we are going to work on two trees. So this week might was maybe a little bit more intensive because we have outlined four trees and um, sewn two trees or quilted two trees. And next week we are going to fill up the tree, uh, tree three and for A and for B. Um, and if you have some spare time, you can already go ahead and outline other trees. So go ahead and outline tree five, six, seven, eight, if you have time to spare, um, because then you don't have to do that anymore. You can just outline them as we did in this video. So outline either in the ditch or a little bit outside the ditch. Um, yeah, I think that was it for this video. If you are in the Facebook group, um, make sure to join us in the live Q&A because there you can ask all your um, questions or troubleshoot whatever you have going on with your machine if you started practicing and quilting. So if you have any questions, you can still join the Facebook group if you want to. I will put a link to the group down below. Um, yeah, I would love to see you in the Q&A over there. And otherwise, I will see you again over here and on the Bernina blog next week. Bye!